Cool. So welcome back, guys. This is uh, I've brought Giz Edwards on the channel. You may know him from YouTube. He is uh, an experienced lucid dreamer. He's been making videos for a very long time, much longer than me. And yeah, I'm very happy to have you on, Giz. So uh, welcome. Thank you very much, Stefan. I appreciate <laughs> that humble intro. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, your history, everything people might want to know. Cool. Um, so, as as you said, my name is Giz Edwards. I was named after Gizmo the Gremlin, and I started making content back in 2007, maybe, wow. on YouTube. I was a really early adopter. I want to say 2008 now. Never mind. Really early adopter of the platform, and I found my niche by creating lucid dreaming content. So, if you don't recognize the name, you'll probably recognize my face at some point, if you've ever Googled how to lucid dream i suppose back in the <laughs> early 2010s yeah. um i i was i got very fortunate i had quite quite a lot of subscribers at first and i managed to sustain a living from making content on youtube which was really really good especially given the the ad apocalypse era during that time and what else can i say i i own a company called future think media which creates media for other for other companies and I'm currently in a tech incubation program creating a nifty little tool for content creators which I can't talk too much about at the moment but it's gonna be awesome very cool very cool yeah the ad apocalypse that was uh, that was the one um, so maybe you could can you tell me what you mainly use or use the lucid dreams for and maybe what's your favorite thing to do in lucid dream so the reason the reason I started lucid dreaming yeah. um, was a little bit different to how other people start. So, well, maybe not actually. So I, I started doing lucid dreaming as a way to explore cool things to do, like most people, like flying and stuff. But that quickly got quite boring, I suppose, for me. Yeah. Um, not to the extent that I just didn't want to do it, but to the extent in which. I wanted to explore how powerful the mind was. This was back in, gosh, I don't know when this was. This was like 2009, maybe, when I started experimenting with lucid dreaming and what it was doing. And I was into like the expand your consciousness bit at the time. And then I wasn't, and then I was, and then I wasn't, and then I was, and now I'm not <laughs> waiting <laughs> to get back into it. So... I would start. I would start doing experiments, like um, trying to invoke different tastes in a dream, trying to uh, have different feelings in a dream, as like physical sensations, electrocution. Like I would try and shoot myself at one point because I wanted to feel pain, and there was lots of different things that I wanted to do. But essentially, it was just an experiment to see how realistic I could make a dream feel, and um, try and understand how powerful that process can be um and i've what else did you ask me then i've forgotten i got lost just uh what you mainly used it for and what your favorite thing to do was my favorite thing to do um well uh, aside from the obvious which is like flying and things like that yeah uh, i once had a dream where uh I, I actually had a predetermined list of things that I wanted to do in a dream uh, when I become lucid. And I was in this particular dream and I became lucid and I thought, cool, I'll get to do whatever was at the top of my list. And it turned out there was nothing that I wanted to do more at that time than uh, my dog was in front of me, which is weird because it wasn't on my list. And in my dream, when I became lucid, I realized that my dog was there. And in, in waking life, my dog had actually died by this point. So I scrapped the list and I just cracked on and just spent some time with my, with my pet. So I'm less now about trying to do things that are external. For example, the flying, the superpowers. I'm less about that. And I'm more about trying to do things that... Uh, satisfy me mentally I suppose like the cathartic things like walking your dog okay okay it's weird it's weird but I like it 
do you think that's interesting actually yeah because i um i feel fairly similar although instead of i guess things like walking i've never had a dog so i, I wouldn't know you know how that would feel but um instead of things like flying now i typically do more like exploration of my consciousness and just asking like really profound questions to my subconscious and seeing what happens and i think to be honest i think that's kind of a journey that most people go on they you know they start off how most of us do where we just hear about this incredible thing we realize we can fly around in a lucid dream and stuff like that we do that for a while but then that does kind of get a bit samey after a while and you sort of crave something deeper and more interesting and more i guess more profound yeah i, w- I would 100 percent agree with you and it gets really really interesting depending on your belief um to the response you get so for example with me i don't believe in uh, a higher power so to speak i i believe that when we dream uh, we dream and it exists entirely in the mind now i know other people have like they believe that um dreams are a gateway to higher consciousness or whatever but it, i prefer the way that i think because it makes my brain or everyone's brains individually seem more fantastic so when you do things in the dream for example i once had a dream in which i wanted to know what my greatest fear was so i asked uh, a, a version of myself weirdly enough a reflection of myself what my greatest fear was and it told me an answer that i, I didn't expect because I'm, I'm terrified of like spiders for example but it said uh, your greatest fear is to die alone oh but, wow yeah not not physically alone but just like you got no friends you got no family and stuff like that but when you wake up you're like my God, that, that was quite profound. But when you think about it, and especially when you think about it from a belief system that I have, which is that was my brain telling me that, it makes you think, wow, my, my brain knows that, and I didn't. And I've had a couple of those experiences where I've, I've talked to the dream knowing that it's my brain, and it says something quite profound and out of the blue. And it really makes you think, how much do you know without knowing that you know it? Yeah, I think um, the subconscious mind is far more powerful than we than we uh, know, basically. Um, mm. So I'm interested, uh, I'm curious actually what your opinion is on. So you say that you find it fascinating that the brain can do all of that and create the lucid dreaming world and you know all of the physics and stuff around that. But... Don't you think it would be equally as impressive if the human brain could also act as a gateway to something much more profound and, you know, other dimensions and things like that? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I I quite often have this opinion about um, God as well when I think about God, um, because I I don't know if you can tell from my videos, but I, I think a lot more than... I let on in my in my videos yeah. or, or than I did. So I think about things like time travel and God and extra dimensions and what the concept of hell would be and loads and loads of different things, like quite weird subjects. But I often think that, um, like take the God thing, for example, uh, I don't know. And there's no way of knowing. Yeah. And for me, like you, you could have – all the evidence, no, sorry, you, you, you cannot have any evidence for or against a belief which is as um, intangible, untangible as God or higher powers or things like that because I don't think there is any empirical data. So I have to go on my gut. Yeah. And my gut, my gut tells me that lucid dreams exist just in the mind. Um, but similarly to my belief with god that's what i believe in but i have to accept the fact that it might not be true so even though i believe in that one thing and we do have evidence to suggest that one thing i have to assume that there could be evidence of the opposite so when i when i think about um lucid dreaming as a gateway to a higher dimension or um expanding your consciousness via different things like that yeah um i go with my gut 
and tell me that the brain is more powerful than I think, but I have to assume that I don't know everything. And yeah, I, I would be well open to the idea that that is the truth. But for me, at this time, I've yet to see it. Okay. Very, that's a really good answer, actually. <laughs> Very, um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so what would be your, just bringing it back to basics now, for everyone that's just had their minds sort of blown apart. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry in advance. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say your biggest tip or, I guess, best collection of tips or ideas for beginners mainly who want to lucid dream better or more easily or just more often? Okay. Um, well, I think I think a big part of uh, why people don't lucid dream is to do with expectation and stress. Um, through my, because I used to do um, coaching, one-on-one coaching with lucid dreamers, quite a lot actually. Yeah. Uh, during a big portion of my time, my life, and uh, quite often I'd get the same kind of things spat back at me, which is. Um, I can't wait for my first lucid dream. I'm doing this, 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 and this, and this. But by adding that stress, even though it's not a bad stress, it's a good stress, adding that stress impacts your sleep. And I think stress and anxiety and all the things that are closely linked to those types of things, it off, it offsets your, your hormones, like serotonin levels and things like that, and it affects your sleep. So my biggest advice for people is just to relax and lower those expectations because it will happen if you do the the necessary steps in order to ensure that you're doing the most you can. It, it will happen naturally. Aside mm-hmm. from that, I think there's a lot of value to be shown with um, people who who s- sleep a bit more, um, think a bit more, and write down or record your dreams because. To be able to lucid dream, you need a long period of REM or longer periods of REM, which only happen during the later um, sleep cycles that you have. Yeah. By having those later sleep cycles, you need to sleep more. And being able to recall your dreams is vital because if you don't even remember your dreams, how are you meant to be aware during them if you just can't even remember them? Yeah. So three factors stress even though it's good it can be bad uh uh, length of sleep because that impacts a lot and also your stress and uh, dream journaling i think those three things once you get that ignore the the different techniques and the methods and things just focus on those you you know what that's actually that's actually really um really good advice and i'll tell you why so the first two so recently I've um, I bought an Apple Watch because for the first time I thought, why am I not tracking my sleep? That's what, the one thing I should be tracking, you know. Yeah. Um, so I got this Apple Watch and I started tracking my sleep and I, I very quickly, my, my sleep quality very quickly declined because I was paying attention to it and I was, you know, tossing and turning and I'd be thinking, oh, what time is it now? Why am I not asleep yet? And like I'd be worried about how bad my sleep score was going to be in the morning. And it took me, it must have taken me at least a week now to actually have a decent night's sleep since I got this thing and since I started tracking my sleep because I was just worried about it and I just wanted it to happen. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be good quality sleep faster. Um, and yeah, obviously that made me stressed. That stopped me sleeping. And um, yeah, so that's just like, I can sort of confirm that that is true because yeah, it's been happening. There's actually um, my friend uh, at university, he, he suffers with insomnia quite a lot. Um, and he told me he's got a tracker that his is a different brand or whatever it is. I, I don't know. And he said, there's two things that come out of doing that. Uh, one of them is that sleep trackers can actually make your insomnia worse because there's, there's a name, which is uh, a name for an unhealthy obsession with trying to achieve perfect <laughs> sleep. Yeah. And it's called, yeah. um, orthosomnia. Oh, really? Is that an actual condition? Actual condition. Wow, so I didn't know that. By, by using trackers and devices like that, it can actually cause you to have less sleep because wow. you're, you're worrying about it. It's unhealthy. Um, and the other one, which I can't remember the name, is um, unhealthy 
obsession with uh, tracking data of your personal life and having orthonosomnia is just one element of that. So it, it will make an interesting video, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of making a video about the Apple Watch and uh, sleep tracking, but I'm going to give people these warnings, you know, like uh, it can cause you to actually sleep worse if you're not careful. Yeah, exactly. Orth orthosomnia. O-R-T-H-O. Somnia. <laughs> you committed to a big word there. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Orthosomnia. Okay. So, um, oh, well, my next question was going to be what do you find holds most people back? But I guess it would be those two things, right? Or those three things? Um, I, I, I don't believe so. I think it uh, holds people back from doing lucid dreaming. One of, one of the things that it could potentially be, uh, well, apart from your expectations, which I don't think I'd named as one of the big three, the expectations of what you could achieve needs to drastically lower. Um, but aside from those three, I think, yeah, expectations is a, is a big one because people think, and I, I don't help this at all because I'm the outlier of data because my first lucid dream happened on the first night that I tried. So my success rate was instantly, well, it was a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and that's bad data. And I think a lot of people see bad data and assume that it's the truth. But realistically, it, it can take a long time. It can take like two months for you to have your first lucid dream. Oh, it can take um, longer sometimes, yeah. Exactly. So I think expectation of how you're going to or when you're going to lucid dream is, is one thing that holds people back because they're like, oh, it's not working. And you probably had the same thing, like yeah. comments saying, oh, it's not, I'm not, I can't lucid dream. I was like, give it time. It, it will happen. Stop stressing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, expectations, lowering those expectations just a tad is, is really vital. And that probably holds people back because they often quit before they've had their first lucid dream because maybe they don't think it's real. Yeah. And I think it's another thing that if you've never had a lucid dream, you don't really know what to expect. So your mind starts, you know, puffing it up to be this huge like um, video game like dream fantasy land where you know everything's amazing but in many cases it's your first lucid dream will be you know like a few seconds and then your next one might be just like you're walking down the road or something I mean yeah you have to build these things up you know yeah my, well, even though my first lucid dream happened on the first night it was exactly as you just described it was I realized I was dreaming and then I woke up <laughs> yeah i mean that's as, as short as you can have a lucid dream is that yeah exactly cool okay so changing subject slightly i noticed that you did a sleep deprivation challenge it was mm -hmm. i believe it was 100 hours did you actually make it to the 100 hours uh with that one i didn't i made it to 92 92 so yeah so can you just tell us about that how was it you know what was the experience like um did you hallucinate for example tell, <laughs> tell me about that well, the experience was hell, um, as you can probably imagine. Yeah. <laughs> 92 hours is just under four days. Um, the reason I did it was actually um, a mind over matter thing. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Yeah. And so I aimed for three and a half days, which was 84 hours. And I just kept on adding a little bit more and more on top and kept on adding like a little bit. Um, but then I made the grave error of lying in bed, oh. which stupid. I know, like hindsight is twenty twenty. At the time, it felt like a great idea. But yeah, I've always been interested to see if I could stay awake, and it also played a part in my undergraduate degree in university. My dissertation was actually based on sleep deprivation. So I had previously stayed awake for this 92-hour period of time and thought, well, that's great. I'll, I'll write a paper on that. It'll be fine. Um, and then I had to stay awake for 88 hours writing that paper, which was just fantastic. Wow. But there's a period of time where you don't know what's going on. Like I remember a few days in, it was like two and a half days, um, you get – kind of stuck in a state of mind where you feel like a zombie but you're it's really odd because it's like there's a split in your brain and one side 
and is the dominant side and it's it's like you're a zombie but then you've got this other side which is hidden um where you're completely aware of what what's going on and what's happening it's almost like um i don't know if you've ever heard of this but it's a syndrome called locked in syndrome where you're completely unable to move but you're conscious inside wow um, no i've not heard of that. well often people think they're dead because they don't look to be alive and it's kind of like that it's like you're in a locked in syndrome where you just don't know what's going on and in terms of hallucinations i did hallucinate um i can't remember what day it was when i started to hallucinate but normally people hallucinate like things or like shapes or demons or you know like really weird stuff like that but mine mine was actually kind of pleasant ish because the first i think the first hallucination i had was either a rainbow or gas okay um i can't remember which one it was i think it was a rainbow and in my apartment um i just saw a rainbow in my living room and it was a surreal experience but the one that actually got me up and walking around was uh, when the gas appeared i thought i thought there was a gas leak in my in my living room in my kitchen rather and um and then i realized that the whole apartment block was not gas it was electric all electric so then when i realized that i was able to walk around in this apartment block and there was gas just filling the air it was really <laughs> odd really odd but in terms of scariness it could have been a lot worse let's be real <laughs> yeah oh uh, i can't i can't imagine doing that i mean maybe one day i'll do it but i think the longest i've stayed awake is literally just one you know missing one night of sleep so staying awake all all night oh i, I can i can do that just on the flip of a dime i really can <laughs> but like, i i've had i've had issues with sleep uh, deprivation in the past like tons and tons of nights i've been awake in my life and staying awake for the whole night is something i can really do quite easily um staying awake for two nights is actually quite a bit of a push but it i i would advise completely against doing it because it can trigger it triggered something the first night i stayed awake it, it kind of flipped a switch in my brain i suppose and i've just never been the same it's the point actually where Wow. I, I, my 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 brain at the moment I'm forgetting quite a lot of stuff. This is probably a more serious note. I'm forgetting quite a lot of things and I'm unsure if it's because uh I've got maybe some genetic predisposition for Alzheimer's maybe maybe there's a, a shrinkage of the gray matter because of sleep deprivation maybe it's because I'm getting older I I don't know but it, it could be one of those three things so i had to um i didn't have to today i bought one of those uh uh dna kit things okay that you see um just to confirm that it's not alzheimer's so my advice just go to sleep <laughs> wow it's not uh, worth it yeah i had no idea yeah okay so i guess what we <laughs> what we can take from this is uh maybe don't try a sleep deprivation challenge guys 100 <laughs> percent don't yeah yeah okay so um moving back to lucid dreaming what real world yeah. benefits would you say lucid dreaming has or or maybe what are you most what are you most excited about in terms of what you can get from lucid dreaming like for example improving confidence or maybe you know practicing a skill or just having fun um what well, two of those things i think is really beneficial um i used to practice guitar um, so I've played guitar for a very long time and I used to practice playing guitar in the dream and I used to think it gave me the edge uh, against other people of my age because I hadn't been practicing that long and I thought well maybe it's because I do it in the dream but realistically I don't think that really has much of an impact when you're practicing a skill um, obviously the data I, I don't know what the data is but my my gut tells me it's not that significant but there are occasions where you can practice um doing a talk so public speaking is one of them or trying to 
trying to solve a, a phobia or confront a phobia, they're big, big ones. Um, for example, I, I've had quite a lot of dreams in which I'm trying to get away from spiders or I've had a, quite a few dreams where I'm doing public speaking or singing in, on stage. Um, I don't have phobias about public speaking or singing, but I can see why practicing those kind of things in a lucid dream would have a bigger impact in how you perform things. I 100% can see that because it's, it's less about learning something external and it's more about how you feel internally that it's affected. And it's basically a form of, um, oh, uh, therapy. I can't remember what the name is now. There's a form of therapy in which you just just get absolutely soaked in the phobia that you're in. I know exactly what you mean, but I also forgot the name of it. Oh, my God. Um, the, the basis of it is like if you're scared of one, let's say spiders, for example, to remove that fear, you would intentionally lucid dream about being surrounded by spiders. Exactly. Yeah. That's going to really annoy me. I cannot, <laughs> cannot think of it. Yeah, I can't remember either. But yeah, cool. Cool. Okay. So um, coming to the end of this episode now, but what I like to end on is I like to ask, what, what do you think the future of lucid dreaming is in terms of how many people might be interested in it, what they might be doing with it, maybe you know what the technology scene will look like? Mm. Uh, firstly, it's called exposure therapy. Ah. <laughs> but to answer your question, <laughs> um, uh, I think we've still got a way to go when it comes to hardware yeah. technology. I, I've been given numerous products to review in my life of, of certain like Kickstarter programs or whatever it may be in which and they claim to be able to uh, make you lucid. Uh, for example, there's one that I just comes to the top of my mind. I can't remember the name of it, so it's a bit irrelevant. But it was um, uh, a device that you attach to your head, and it gives you electric shocks in your brain when you enter REM. And it electrocuted a certain section of your brain or whatever it was, and it was supposed to induce a sense of, um, of lucidity. And... Yeah, that, that wasn't good. That was a nightmare. So there's quite a lot of these products that I I wish worked, but I don't think work. However, technology improves in leaps. It doesn't just improve in like tiny steps. Yeah. So my hope is that there will be a technology that improves the way that you become lucid. Um and everybody can try it. And I think that having a place where you can do things whilst you're lucid and can maintain that level of lucidity, because it, it won't it won't be long in terms of the grand scheme of humanity in which we've identified every aspect of what makes somebody lucid in the brain and we'll be able to just click our fingers and it will happen. It won't... In the terms of this, the lifespan of humanity, I think that that will come quite quick. Yeah. So when that happens, I think it will expand the the process of trying to discover things that we can visualize outside because of resources. So what do I mean by that? So, for example, a lot of big discoveries were found because of dreams, not specifically lucid dreams, but because of dreams. So, for example, the the structure of an atom was um, discovered because of somebody dreaming about something like that. Uh, Einstein's theory of relativity occurred to him in a dream. Um, the eye of a needle happened in a dream. Uh, the book um, Frankenstein's Monster, that, that occurred to Mary Shelley in a dream. The, the list goes on and on and on. But things like that, where you have the time to be able to consciously affect stuff that happens in your dreams when that happens i think that will be a big leap and we'll be able to ex expand people and society in a way that we just can't imagine yeah being able to tap into the power of the brain in that way especially for creativity and just inspiration for new ideas i think that's going to be huge absolutely
well, I mean, it already has been. I mean, as you said, those dreams have changed the world uh, in terms of, you know, what those ide- what those discoveries have then become. So, yeah, yeah, very interesting. I, I'm always optimistic about the future for these things. Me too. Yeah. Cool. Well, Giz, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, do you have any final words or parting gifts for people or, you know, advice where they can find you online, anything like that? Well, I would say go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Giz Edwards, but that's that's just not happening at the moment. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you, can, you can find me there. I'll eventually post some content on YouTube, but I don't think it's going to be around the field of lucid dreaming because uh, I, I've stepped back um, and I've, I've kind of, I think I've done my part in trying to bring lucid dreaming to the the forefront of people's minds you're doing your part people like matt um daniel love and james and all those good people they're they're doing their parts and i think my time's come to step back from lucid dreaming but content yeah eventually i'll make some so you can go to youtube.com forward slash giz edwards and twitter I'm, I'm basically giz edwards everywhere cool 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 well thank you very much and uh yeah Hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you very much for having me on and thank you everyone for listening.